Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, the circus is about to begin. Dolly Jacobs, known to circus audiences throughout the world as the Queen of the Air, has dazzled audiences with her death-defying act high above the circus floor. In a similar manner, Pedro Race, as a member of one of Europe's most exciting aerial acts and as a soloist, has kept audiences at the edge of their seats in anticipation as he performed high above the floor without a net. Together, they have helped keep the circus alive in Sarasota. Dolly Jean Jacob was born to circus royalty in Circus City, USA, Sarasota, Florida, on January 26, 1957. Her mother was a famous New York model, Jean Rockwell. Her father, Ludwig Jacob, was one of the most famous clowns in the world and a star on the Ringling Brothers Circus, Lou Jacobs. Dolly and her older sister, Luann, grew up in a circus atmosphere. I'm a circus child. In Sarasota, it's a treasure cove of performers because Ringling Brother you used to winter here so many of the great circus artists homesteaded here and so that's how I was born here. Being the daughter of a famous clown meant spending long months without her father being home. The family always looked forward to the times when the circus was in Sarasota and Lou was home. We were a very close family but we all, I was always longing to see him, always looking out the window hoping for him to come home, waiting for him to come home. There was uh, one summer that I was able to travel and, and be with him on my summer vacation, so that was quite exciting. It was normal. I don't think I grasped the, the magnitude of who he was when I was a child, other than uh, he was a wonderful father, and I missed him. And uh, being able to visit him backstage in Clown Alley, and uh, with all the other clowns, and uh, that uniqueness, I knew, separated me from the other children in school. While Lou was traveling the country with the circus bringing joy to children of all ages, at home, Dolly and her sister were raised by their mother. You can't thank somebody enough for what your mother teaches you. And, and my mother uh, didn't teach me my aerial act, but she taught me uh, to be a good person and to respect your elders and, and to reach for the stars. Don't let anything stop you and uh, don't be uh, satisfied with second best. She attended Brentwood and Wilkinson Elementary and Brookside Junior High School. From an early age, Dolly was drawn to the circus. As soon as we were able to walk, uh, we were doing back bends and splits in the backyard. And when I joined Sailor Circus, I was in elementary and we already were started doing uh, a low aerial side-by-side uh, -side, uh, uh, trapeze. And, uh, and from there, you know, I would sneak over there and practice a single trapeze uh, when nobody was looking, you know, and would close down. And uh, it was just something inside me that I knew I wanted to be up in the air. Of course, Dolly's dream was to join the circus. In junior high school, she had an opportunity to fulfill that dream by becoming a showgirl with the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. She continued her studies while on the road with the circus. I did a lot of studying as we were traveling early in the morning, um, three, four hours a day. And then even on the trips, we lived on a train while we were traveling with Ringling. And um, got to see a lot of the museums and, uh, and locations in America that I would have normally only read about. On the other side of the world, Pedro Reis was born in Cape Town, South Africa on November 20th, 1958. He was the third child of Jose Rabello Race and Herida Matilda Steenkamp Race in a family of five, three girls and two boys. My father came from Madeira, Portugal, and my grandfather was the first to have a fleet of tuna fishing, fishing boats in Cape Town. 
So uh, unlike his father, my father opened up a couple of delis in Cape Town. My mother, she was from Dutch descent. She was a very loving mother. She did all the cooking and she was a typical housewife, if you will. I grew up with a very loving family, but like I said, my father was extremely strict. I was brought up, uh, uh, children should be seen and not heard. Uh, we called our older uh, people that we didn't know, uncle or auntie or mister or sir or missus. And that's the way we were brought up. And I don't regret it at all. It's really a wonderful way to be, having been raised that way. Pedro attended Catholic school in Cape Town, South Africa until fifth grade. There, he received the foundation that would shape his life. When Pedro was in the fifth grade, the family moved to the suburbs. Here, he became involved in the local YMCA. It would change his life. At the YMCA was this outdoor flying trapeze rigging. So it was like a magnet, and I was attracted to this flying trapeze rigging, this huge net, a trampoline, and this just looked like too much fun to, uh, to keep me away from. So I remember sneaking into the grounds in the evenings when everybody was away and then jumping on the trampoline or jumping on the trapeze net and being chased. <laughs> in fact, I remember the warden of the YMCA, YMCA chasing me around the trampoline one day. And he eventually followed me home and told my dad, you know, that I was being mischievous and my father came a good whopping, but didn't give me away, I was back the next day. As Pedro became involved with the YMCA, he became more enamored with the aerial acts, helping to develop the circus art school and perfecting the skills that would lead him to the next level of his craft. At 12 years of age, Pedro's father died. Through the next few years, he struggled with school. It held no interest for him as he was focused on developing his skills as an aerial artist. Three months into his senior year in high school, Pedro decided he could wait no longer. I took my books to the principal's office and said, I won't be needing these anymore. I'm leaving and joining the circus. And of course, he thought it was nuts and tried to talk me out of it, but I literally made up my mind and I knew I was gonna be in the circus and in all honesty, it has been an incredible education and I'm very, very happy. However, I will say this, I do not advocate it to anybody. I tell everybody to remain in school, finish high school, get a degree if possible. It's not for everybody, I was just very lucky. Pedro left South Africa for an adventure. He performed with a group of performers from the Cape Town YMCA Circus Art School called the Star Lords, and they toured throughout Europe. I used to do flying trapeze, and there was a group of us, 13 in the troupe, and we did five different circus acts, including acrobatics, high wire, flying trapeze. And after four years, we decided to uh, disband the act, that we'd go our own ways. In 1982, Pedro and four of his fellow performers established The Survivors, a thrilling aerialist act that toured throughout Europe. The Survivors were comprised of four of the troupe Pedro had been working with. They decided to recreate an act that had not been performed for many years. The original performers, the Rudry brothers, had stopped performing the act when the stress of performing such a high-risk act became too much. And we saw this video of this act called the Clairance and uh, it was a very famous act, but unfortunately uh, two of his partners got killed doing this particular act. And we thought, wow, this is something that we should do. <laughs> and we recreated the act. So it was, an, it was a great adventure. There were no safety devices or safety nets, and uh, the catcher would hang by his legs and I would leap out into the midair and he would catch me. And he'd become a pendulum and using his body as the pendulum, I'd do front somersaults and pirouettes, and so with my partners. While performing in Switzerland in 1984, Irving and Kenneth Feld, then owners of the Ringling Brothers Circus, came to watch their act. The troupe was offered a contract with the greatest show on earth. For Pedro, it was a dream come true. I think at that time, and probably today, everybody in the circus business in Europe wanted to come to America and join Ring Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. It was one of the pinnacles of any uh, circus artist's life and career. And so getting here uh, was wonderful, I mean, coming to America. However, I will say I was extremely disappointed 
was Sarasota, the county of Sarasota, that there was not more circus. Because I honestly believed that this was this great circus town and there would be circuses on every corner. <laughs> A little, uh, I guess, uh, overexpected, but um, I, I expected more circus. While Pedro was perfecting the survivors in Europe, Dolly was working on her own career. Her godmother, Margie Geiger, wife of one of the original Flying Walendas, Joe Geiger, did a Roman ring act with the circus. She knew Dolly's desire to be a solo act. She told Dolly she needed something different and introduced her to the Roman rings. I think it was love at first touch, if you want to say, but it was, it was very difficult. Uh, you know, it's not, I'm not going to say it was an easy ride, you know, it was very painful, and, uh, but uh, no pain, no gain. Dolly did gain through her pain. Margie served as her trainer, and she was a taskmaster. It took time as Dolly had to perfect her act and overcome any fear of height. Hard work and discipline paid off. And I learned the whole act pretty much down low, just off the ground and then go up five feet and get used to it. So when I, each time I went up five feet, five feet, you know, I'd have that little bit of fear in me and that's good and I'd get used to it. And you swing and get used to it. Next thing you know, I was comfortable. We worked on it several months and the heat started to pick up here, as it does in the summer. And uh, finally, we decided it was time for her to uh, go back to the show and audition, which we did, went to Washington. Dolly practiced the one day, and a few people were there between shows. The second day, everybody was there looking, and she did a splendid job and shocked everybody because they did not expect what she was doing or would do. Irvin Kennefeld had me uh, work that night so I was hired on the spot. It was a different act. It was something that uh, you know hadn't been done in many years. While she was thrilled to be performing, she still longed to be a featured solo act. Once again, Joe and Margie Geiger had a suggestion. Margie and Joe had told me about this finish trick was a full flyaway somersault from the rings, completely releasing and catching a rope, which had been done about 40 years prior. And, uh, and I had said, well, that's it, you know. But there was nobody around that really had seen it or had done it that could teach me. So it was really a trial and error. And it was the only trick that I practiced with a safety mechanic on. I mean, it's quite dangerous. It's like doing a, a a flying act trick, which, you know, these flying acts have a net. It's like doing one of those tricks without a net. And so I did it, and I got solo status from that time. Dolly now had solo status and began working her way up the ladder. Margie had been a ballet dancer in New York and instilled in her the grace of a ballet dancer performing in the air. Before long, Dolly was given the title, the Queen of the Air. I kind of always never really felt that I deserved it, but it's, it was given to me, and, and, and I try to carry on the tradition of those great artists before me. Dolly was invited to perform at the International Circus Festival of Monaco. This was a great honor, as few circus artists were invited to participate in this event. But Dolly was invited twice, each time winning the La Dame du Cirque, the Lady of the Circus, first in 1977 and again in 1987. She also won the coveted Silver Clown Award in 1987. For Pedro and the survivors, the act was going well. They were touring with the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus for two years, when in 1986, their fate mirrored that of the Rudry Brothers the original group to perform this act. They stopped the act because their ca the catcher literally lost his nerve because it was such a mental challenge having the partner's life literally in his hands. And that's literally what happened to my catcher. After four years of catching myself and the other two partners above the concrete floor or whatever, his nerves took over and Eventually, he just couldn't take it anymore. But we made a pact. We said, when we finish Ringling, we'll go to Europe, uh, performing some of the best circuses in Europe one more time. 
go to Monte Carlo, perform in Monte Carlo, and then call it quits. And that's what we did. Pedro had to decide what to do with his future. He determined he would develop a solo act. Of course, it would have to thrill the audience. He developed the Cloud Swing Act. It was similar to Dolly's Ring Act, except while Dolly finished with a flyaway somersault, Pedro did a jump, flying across the ring 20 feet through the air to a rope extended 30 feet above the floor. And so I'd fly across the ring, catch the rope, the string would break and I would free fall, literally uh, 20 feet, before the bungee would take the shock. And I was on the floor in two seconds and I could pinpoint it to land six inches in front of you, which I did in the ring. It was always amazing to see the astonishment on the audiences, especially the ones in front of me, where I would jump, catch her up, be a loud bang, people would lift out of their seats from fright and I'd be on the floor. And I did that act for four years as well. Pedro was also invited to attend the Circus Festival of Monaco, first when he was with the Star Lords, then with the Survivors, and again as a solo act in 1990, when he also won an award for his performance. Dolly and Pedro's paths first crossed in 1984. Pedro and the survivors were performing with the blue unit of the Ringling Circus, and Dolly was traveling with the red unit. They knew of each other, but had not yet met. I saw a picture of Dolly in the center ring as a, with a solo status, and I knew she was a great aerialist and a great artist, and I really would like, wanted to meet her. And uh, both shows were in, uh, off, off the road. The blue unit was building the new show and the red unit was taking two weeks off uh, as part of the two-year tour. Uh, and we got together, a group of us went out to a club one evening on a day off. And Dolly was there and uh, I said to a friend of mine, another aerialist, Mark David, to introduce me to Dolly. And that's, that was our first encounter, the first time we met. I had uh, heard about Pedro's act, uh, The Survivors, and uh, I was very impressed, he, and, and there was something, I don't know, there's something about uh, somebody doing something so unique and so dangerous uh, that uh, impressed me. The two continued to develop their careers. Dolly left the Ringling the following year and secured a contract with the Big Apple Circus. In 1986, she was practicing her act at Sailor Circus. Pedro was also there, practicing his act. They began a romance that grew into admiration, respect, and love. They continued with their solo acts, dating when they could. On July 4, 1990, Pedro was scheduled to perform his act in New York. Dolly flew up to see him, and Pedro proposed. Two days later, Pedro took to the wire to perform his act before a sellout crowd. All was going well. But unknown to Pedro, a crew member had failed to properly fix the rigging. So I jumped, flew across the ring, caught the rope, and on my way down, I was preparing to land. And the next thing I know, I still had the rope in my hand. I was laying on my back. My brain said, there's something wrong. My feet said, there's definitely something wrong. Because uh, I'd broken, shattered both my ankles and my uh, low extremities, like basically the bones that exploded. Luckily he had boots on because it was able to, you know, keep it clean, but I had to hold him so that his legs didn't touch each other, you know. And uh, it was, it was, it was a terrible time. And uh, I remember standing in the parking lot of the hospital and in the parking lot I could hear him screaming when they were pulling his leg. And uh, it just broke my heart. And then the doctor came out and told me that, uh, don't even, uh, don't get your hopes up for an artificial ankle because there is no such thing. I had uh, surgery the next day. My right ankle was later fused and they gave me a chance to see if the bone would heal and uh, in my left ankle, which I'm happy to say it did, so I didn't have my left ankle fused. But um, that's the chances we take. Pedro was determined to come back with Dolly's help he worked long and hard and endured a painful rehabilitation. After a few years of rehabilitation, Pedro was ready to try the act again. It was in the same hall that the Flying Walindas did their famous seven-man pyramid for the first time 
After their fateful accident, under the watchful eyes of a nervous audience, Pedro took to the rope and performed his act. But it was my, uh, my little challenge. Um, and I did it, I did the show. Uh, I, the, I had the contract, we were there for about 10 days. But the passion and the flame for what I was doing that particular act had gone out. And I knew then, then that, you know, I, I recreated the act, I did it. I uh, didn't lose my nerve and that was fine with me. And I literally rolled the rope up and put it in the suitcase and said, that's okay, next. While they put their marriage plans on hold, by 1994, they determined they needed to be together and created an act combining both their talents. They caught it on Wings of Love. And we came up with the idea that wouldn't it be great if we actually did a pas de deux with the straps instead of just a soloist, a male soloist. And we um, brought in Guy Caron, from, uh, who was the original uh, artistic director for Cirque du Soleil, to help us because, again, we knew that the two of us can knock heads and we needed a third party to actually be the, be the uh, mirror. And then we also brought in Jean Leger, who was at one time the uh, artistic director for the Winnipeg uh, Ballet and he was a choreographer. So he helped us and we created a balletic uh, feel to the uh, act that we did. Dolly and Pedro toured internationally on Wings of Love for two years. Earlier, during his convalescence period, Pedro had begun to think about what he could do to enhance and preserve the circus traditions. He thought of two things. One, he wanted to start a youth circus school called the National Circus School of Performing Arts. It would offer year-round educational programs. And second, he wanted to start Circus Sarasota an intimate European-style circus with a single ring showcasing each performer's artistry. In effort to raise interest and funding, Pedro and Dolly decided to put on a circus in Sarasota. We formed a board, I had a launching board for the National Circus School of Performing Arts. And uh, this Russian tent that was up in Orlando became available. And Dolly and I uh, decided that we were gonna purchase this tent and, and somehow this had to be our tent so that we could make the dream and the vision tangible to everybody. That first year, they learned a difficult but valuable lesson. With no money, no budget, no marketing experience, we thought that if we put the tent up and put on the circus, they will come. They didn't. <laughs> a true lesson in life to uh, know, uh, it's not just location, it's also marketing and advertising. And we put on an incredible show, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. And the artists worked for a stipend, really. They really knew what we were trying to, to create a great circus of the highest level here in Sarasota that could continue the legacy that was started here by the Ringlings. Those early days were a struggle. Pedro worked long, hard hours for the circus for no pay. Dolly took a job at Bush Gardens in order to pay the performers. Eventually, they had to sell their tent in order to keep the show alive. Today, they rent a tent for the performances, but look forward to the day they will again own their own big top. Their hard work, sacrifice, and endurance has paid off, as a decade later, they are continuing to grow. Sarasota has a very rich circus history, one that very few cities can claim. It's my heritage and I'm so very, very proud of it. We're here to preserve our history and to honor the circus greats of the past that paved the way for us. Dami and Pedro have not only brought the legacy of circus back to life in Sarasota, which is Circus City USA, but they have elevated it to a much higher plane. It is their intention, I believe, to put circus in the same category as ballet and opera. It is an art form and should be treated as such. And so they take it to the next level and they are after excellence in their art. They have brought Circus back to Sarasota, where it should be. While Circus Sarasota has now entered its second decade and made its mark as a part of the cultural and entertainment center of Sarasota, the school is still a dream to be fulfilled. It's hard for a school to support itself. It's easier to create positive cash flow by selling tickets to a performance. 
So we made a decision that we would continue to create performances until we could become uh, uh, financially stable and then look at the possibility of starting the school. Because a school you need property, you need an address, and there's bricks of mortar involved. Through Circus Sarasota, the couple is giving back to the community with laughter. Laughter Unlimited provides professional clowns and circus entertainers to nursing homes, assisted living facilities, daycare centers and hospitals, bringing gifts of joy, laughter and hope to people who need it the most. They bring an entourage of uh, clowns to the campus on a regular basis which adds uh, life, zest and vitality to uh, our residents and I might add to our staff as well. So uh, they are an adjunct service if you will. They're added to the overall uh, programming which already exists and uh, it's a fabulous uh, relationship. Their purpose in, in being here in Sarasota not only is to, to retain the tradition of the circus but also to broaden their efforts to try to bring in children, to try to train them, to try to make them understand the importance of self the importance of self-confidence, the importance of understanding discipline, the understanding of what it is all about to be a part of a team, because you can't not do a circus act without relying on many other people. The dream of bringing the circus back to life in Sarasota has been an arduous task for Pedro and Dolly. We ask them why they have spent their time and finances to accomplish this undertaking. This is the place it belongs in Sarasota. And uh, a lot of our friends that, uh, that perform in Europe and, uh, and such, you know, they, they, there's a void there. And this is why we started Circus Sarasota here. It's my heritage. And I feel very passionately about preserving my heritage and honoring those great performers of the past uh, that paved the way for us and uh, to uh, to not let people forget about them and about what they did and their achievements, what they did. Circus Sarasota is my passion. I want to see it succeed. It is my baby and uh, it has matured. Uh, it surely has. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to see uh, people come to the show. Last year we had 35,000 people see the show under the big top. And another great thing about it is that it's truly a family entertainment. And what's wonderful about it is that grandparents come with their children and the, their children, the parents, come with their children. And we strive that it's not just for the children, it's family entertainment. So when we give away tickets, we give away tickets to families. So the mom, pop and the kids can sit down together and create an, a, a, a memory that's everlasting. So they might leave the circus and at home the next day the kid might say, wow, do you remember the guy in the high wire? And a month later, the daughter might say, do you remember the clown? And the parents a year later will say, do you remember when we went to the circus? Let's go again. And that's what it's about.